Senator Murkowski, what is your reaction to today's announcement that the president is putting offshore drilling on hold? Well, I join with most Alaskans in expressing a disappointment that Shell will not be allowed to proceed uh, with exploration activities this summer. Uh, they had certainly gone the extra mile uh, to make sure that they had a plan in place, uh, had been successful in gaining all the necessary permits, and, and it was truly at the last minute when the, when the uh, Deepwater Horizon uh, tragedy occurred that everything was put on hold. Uh, that 30-day pause, as we call it, um, has now been extended for Shell offshore uh, for yet another season. Uh, I think this is unfortunate. Um, I am clearly very sensitive to, to the tragedy that is as yet unfolding in, in the Gulf, uh, but I do feel that Shell had really taken that, those extra steps, uh, not only in their initial plan that they had presented, but in the add-ons that they offered up to the Department of Interior after the, uh, the, the Gulf uh, spill to ensure that that level of preparedness, that level of protection was in place. Um, I am hopeful that the administration is willing to work with Shell to ensure that they will be able to proceed uh, next season, uh, that they will uh, allow for a continuation of the permits that are already in hand, allow for a continuation of that lease, and give them timely enough notice so that they can gear up to mobil mobilize uh, for next season. Given the risks, should we be drilling offshore at all? Well, I, I think we recognize, and, and clearly the Deepwater Horizon tragedy is, is a very poignant reminder that there is risk associated with exploration uh, and production of our energy resources. What we need to do, what our responsibility is, is to make sure that to the fullest extent possible that, 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 that risk is, is ameliorated. Um, I think we're going to find, as we learn more about what happened with the Deepwater Horizon, that there was a, there was, um, a, a level of complacency. Um, there hadn't been an accident down in the Gulf in, 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 in decades, um, a, an accident of, of, of consequence. I think you saw it on, behalf, on the side of the, the operators as well as within the agencies. That cannot be allowed to happen. But I think we recognize that we will continue to need oil and, and natural gas for, for years to come. From an energy security perspective, it's important for us to figure out how we get this right. I want to make sure that the lessons that we are learning now from, from the Deepwater Horizon uh, tragedy, um, that, that we learn from this in a positive way and, and, and work very aggressively to ensure that we don't see an incident of this nature again. Why is it important for offshore drilling to go ahead in Alaska? I think we recognize the, the great potential for the resource offshore. Uh, look, at the, look at the situation that Shell Oil is in. They have been working aggressively now for, for three, five years now in the process to, to develop offshore because they believe in that potential invested over two billion dollars to purchase the leases, have gone through uh, a, a series of, of regulatory hurdles and, 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 and permitting procedures that have taken years and, and millions of dollars in the process. And they have nothing to show for it. But I think they believe very, very strongly that there is great opportunity for, uh, for America's energy security offshore Alaska. I think in, in the state, we recognize that this is not only um, uh, kind of the, the, the rescue plan, if you will, for the Trans-Alaska Pipeline, getting more oil into that pipeline. Uh, this, is, this is critical for our state as well when it comes to, to the resource and, and the jobs that, that will come with it. Um, we want to make sure that, that uh, we're able to produce offshore, but to do it safely. We want to make sure that the environment uh, is, is, is cared for uh, while at the same time we're able to access a very necessary resource. Does the six-month delay make it more likely that oil companies will look elsewhere than Alaska 
or even outside the U.S. to drill? Well, if it, if it is just a six-month delay, if the Department of Interior gives the go-ahead to Shell next year in the winter um, at the latest, um, say, March, gives them the time to, to, to mobilize for the, for the ex exploration season in 2011. I don't think that that sends the signal that we're not open for business offshore in, in Alaska. But if the administration is looking to, uh, to deliver the death knell to, to offshore exploration activity in, in Alaska, and they just kind of keep shell dangling on this, if it becomes longer than a six-month delay on top of the delays that, uh, that have already been in place, um, then I think it is a signal that you're sending to the industry that you're not welcome up here. What can be done legislatively in the wake of the Gulf of Mexico spill? There are a whole uh, host of measures that we are working on within the Energy Committee quite aggressively at this time to respond to uh, what we're learning from the Deepwater Horizon uh, accident. Um, after the Exxon Valdez uh, tragedy in, in 1989, there was legislation that was, was crafted. It was the Oil Spill Prevention Act of 1990, OPA 90. And, um, it's time that we look at OPA 90 and update it. And there, there are, uh, as I say, a whole host of measures that we are in the process now of, of, um, of updating um, and, and just focusing on how the processes can be made better. Just this week, I introduced uh, an amendment to the supplemental um, that would allow for an expedited uh, claims process. Uh, we saw, after the Exxon Valdez, um, just a torturous process in terms of claimant's ability to be made whole uh, after that disaster. Uh, decades of litigation. I've, I'm hoping that we have learned from that. We don't want to put those that have been damaged uh, by the spill in the Gulf through decades of litigation. So we've, we've crafted what I think is, is a good bill um, because it won't be part of the supplemental. We will be moving this forward as part of this legislative package um, that I just mentioned. But uh, there, there are a whole series of issues that we're going to be looking to. Obviously, the, the liability cap is one that has um, generated a great deal of discussion. BP has said they're not going, they do not intend to be held to um, that 75 million cap that they will pay uh, damages above and beyond that. But I think it's important that we look at that cap. Uh, I've also introduced legislation that increases the, um, the uh, amount of, of revenue that is going into the oil spill liability trust fund. Uh, currently, it's set at eight cents a gallon. We're increasing that amount so that we can get that fund up to a, a $10 billion fund that can be readily accessed. So there are multiple measures that we're working on and uh, hope to be able to, to roll those out relatively shortly. I think that's all. Thank you, Senator. Great. Thank you.